Okay, so we must be recording. Uh, so let's see what we got. I've been busy, I've been sick, I've been everything except doing what I need to be doing. So let's get through this. In fact, this just came today and uh, look at this. If I had this, I could take down a World Trade Center. Bad joke, I know. But uh, I was very upset because I already made this video once and I was hoping to uh, uh, live stream it to YouTube and I actually did it and the video was there and it said it was processing it and it was 38 minutes long and it just couldn't do it. Uh, I don't know if that's because of YouTube or what, but it should have done it. But uh, when I get the chance and get a wild hair, I will then sit there and do this with these. I will try and see how this works. That's right, VR goggles. And uh, see if I can actually VR while I'm live streaming. Like, set up the camera in here or have it watching something like TV or something. And then go in another room and see if it works. But the reason I... Uh, I'm doing this video is to show you what I've been up to. Let's just make sure everything's still running. Uh, yep. Okay. And, uh, yeah, uh, idle hands and stuff. I get on uh, eBay and I wind up uh, doing things. I, I Natural born procurement manager. But I picked up this model uh, and I picked it up for 20 bucks with uh, free shipping because that's how eBay screws you with the uh, shipping and handling. You can get something for a righteous price and then you'll find out the shipping and handling actually costs more than the item sometimes. So it gets really crazy. Okay, and then uh, the other thing that goes on with uh, eBay is that you uh, sit there and you uh, uh, typically the bidding all goes on in like the last two minutes. That's when the prices start to go up. And uh, sometimes you get upset at somebody, like if, if you were getting this at a good price and somebody screwed you, you'll try to screw them back. And sometimes you'll be left hanging the bag. So I got these three kits uh, at a uh, not bad price, but it wasn't a great price. And uh, this is one that I've only had in 112 scale, Wolf WR1 Ford. Uh, very interesting car. Uh, when uh, new team, it only lasted for about three years. I think 76 was the first year it ran, and of course their car won the first race it was in and uh, stuff. In fact, they placed, I believe, the car placed second in the world championship and the constructors, uh, you know, the people that build the car, the engineering, not the drivers. And what was funny about that is that it was only a one car entry while almost every other team was two. And then uh, I got this, and I've had this model before. It's really nice. It's an old one, and it actually has some um, metal bars in it. In fact, this one has some metal bars in it, too. I don't know if you can make it out there. Zoom in. But it's uh, to hold the wing from uh, scraping the ground, and then the back wing to hold it down to the chassis. They have some actual wires in there. But, uh, yeah, I got this, and I'll show you why. And then they had one of these, uh, Liget, I've got this kit. I've got so many kits in my stash i got to do. But it's just like I get halfway through them or something and I just uh, lose the motivation. And right now somebody has taken my uh, model building station and kind of like put me in Never Never Land. But I want to show you what I do. And uh, some people paint. And uh, other people paint, but they also assemble. And uh, I used to bring this in when I was able to teach, bring in stuff like this because we would be discussing scale and I would show the kids. Yeah, and this is another funny thing on these uh, kit, uh, these uh, display cases. But this is what I do, uh, one of the kinds of models I make. I either make airplanes or I make Formula One cars, and this one... I kind of did on my own design, uh, kind of trying to mimic a design that was there. But you can see the detail right down to the driver and stuff, uh, the eyeballs on the driver, if you can zoom in and stuff. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, the interesting thing is, when it came to this kit that I got, 
I've actually had two of these already and in fact here's one of them right here in fact let's put them both up let's let's show this one first this was the first one I built and these are Benetton B188s and the drivers at the time were Terry Bootsen and I don't know if he's Dutch or what I can't remember the colors of the helmet will tell it uh, you know the uh, orange and yellow and uh, the other driver was an Italian, a sound, Alessandro Nanini. And uh, Nanini, uh, the other car I'll show you in a second, that's got his helmet and work up on it. But uh, what was bad was uh, part of the way through the 89 season, he got kicked out of racing. Well, he didn't get kicked out. He got med down because he had a uh, flying a private helicopter, had an accident, and the blade took off his forearm. But they surgically reattached it, but he had nerve damage, so he never raced in Formula One again. So, but what was interesting about this car at the time that I was building them, this is Nanini's and this one, maybe we can show you a little bit more because the, uh, I fastened it down with double side tape but what's uh, bad is the tape came loose on this one or semi loose it looks like I have a little damage on one of the mirrors. I don't want to play with it. And I don't know. I tried the other day and I couldn't do it uh, when I did the other uh, thing. Let's see if I can... The other uh, live stream. Nope. Still not having any joy here. Well, let's see if I can do it this way. But the engine's covers come off and you can do detail to the engines. Nope. That's on there. Uh, on all these Tamiya... Oh, there we go. So there you go. See? So you do that work too, and it's just like the real car. And this is one of the things you have to be careful on, how you then sit there and, uh, and there's those wires right there. I don't know if you can see them. And then there's the wire on the front. But uh, yeah, uh, you follow the painting guides and stuff, and you put it together. Now what's funny is you'll see guys build Formula One cars on the internet and stuff, and they will use actually furniture polish and stuff to try to put a shine on this and uh, it actually makes the stuff just too thick and then what happens is the uh, bodies don't go together as well as they should but to give you an idea uh, this is what you get in the kit let me get this stuff out of the way because then you'll see what I've been doing also but, uh, you know, it's like, why would you get this kit again? And this is what you uh, start with, with the kit. You get uh, the tires. You get uh, the body and suspension. And you can see these, this was a white body. What's nice is they have some raised lines to help with the uh, demarcation on this. But uh, that's going to be a little bit problematic. I'll show you in a little bit why. Um, got the, the instructions, of course. And then we have the floor of the car, the engine, the wings, and stuff. But you go from this to this. And, uh, yeah, so this is, like I say, some people paint ships. Other people make model airplanes and paint them and stuff. And other people, uh, then they uh, have to paint them and get them together. Okay, senior moment here. What am I doing? Yep, okay. Anyway, okay, now the reason I wanted to show you this was this is one of the things I've been doing. In fact, I've, I'm waiting for another package. I've been getting stuff I got on the internet, and uh, you know me, I wind up spending seven hours, you go all the way through the night. Like tonight, uh, t t t this morning, you wouldn't believe what I was doing, but uh, yeah, I wound up going to sleep at noon. It sounds like somebody who paints I know, too. Especially uh, anyway, uh, but uh, I'm waiting for a package from Japan, the Japanese. Uh, and what I was doing was uh, I learned online they have these garage shops. They call them uh, these these little fabricators. Everybody's like their own little fabricator. Think about 3D printing coming in the future. Well, this is what hobbies are in Japan. So I got on the internet and uh, I was looking for this one specific decal sheet because they're only made in Japan. And uh, 
It's called Vector Magic, and the interesting thing about it is, uh, I, this is when I ran into these little shops. Now, this is what I'm going to be able to do. When Nini had his accident, he got an Italian driver who uh, was uh, coming up through the ranks, not all that great coming up through the ranks, but uh, again, still qualified for Formula One. But uh, Emanuele Piro, and he just kind of did lackadaisical. But uh, here, you can see on the wings, it's like Benetton, you know, and Ford and stuff. And actually, this is kind of like what the car is look like up here, this top one. And I got these decal sheets from Japan. And then here are the bo here's the bottom one. Now, what's funny is, for some reason, I don't know why, I painted the edge on the front wing on this one red. And I painted this the yellow. Okay. But uh, what's nice is uh, they've got like seven up. Uh, decals went on the rear spoilers and stuff like this so and then this Re Riallo had different uh, versions of it burners Riallo cal calories they had a Gillette gel and they had like four different kinds on there so I've got a lot of options and stuff and you can see like right there the seven up on the side plate there but this the whole rear spoiler here will become green on the top and stuff and it will have a big seven up on it so I do have some different stuff. And then uh, I was just looking at stuff, and there's another uh, decal company I had never gotten decals from. Hopefully I say it right, Shunko. And those would be decals for this vehicle. And this is why uh, I got them for this Renault RE30 back in the old turbo era. In uh, 2017, we've got the... Uh, new turbo era with the wide tires and stuff but uh, yeah this one uh, interesting decal sheet again uh, you had Elaine Prost and uh, oh, who was the other guy let me look at the sheet actually Rene Arno thank you and then actually Eddie Cheever uh, an American uh, drove these but uh, Cheever's name isn't on this decal sheet and for the Benetton, Perro's name isn't on it, because usually you get a name and you get a uh, flag. Uh, here they don't put them together. Uh, you got the names over here and you got the flags over here. But uh, yeah, what's interesting about this is uh, there were various decal sheets. Uh, another maker had it for literally double the price, but it, it you know their, their decal sheet but and it did have Cheever's name on it and it did have one of these squares was whited out and stuff like this but this is pretty interesting because you got like the day glow orange then you got the red and the blue because one driver had red on the car and well you know what I don't know why I'm showing you this box and bubble wrap because let's see if I got it uh, time to get messy nope wrong one Okay. Let's put that over there. Somebody will kill me for putting that on their bed. Okay, uh, here we go. Here's the RE30 that I did once before. And, uh, yeah. Back in the day of wide tires, the wide tires are coming back. And this is, uh, Elaine Prost in there, but you can see one of my decals is messed up, so maybe I'll be using, uh, doing Arnaud since I've got Elaine Prost here, and I can actually use one of these and put it back over on top of this and then gloss over it again and stuff. But, uh, yeah, these cars were crazy. These, these things had like 12, 1,200 horsepower, absolutely off the hook. And a lot of times they wouldn't even run them with the front wings. These were total... Uh, ground effects upside down wings for the cars and stuff like that but uh, yeah so I've got the second kit for this and this is why I got this and you can see kinda like the decals match up these are decals from the kit but you can see that these are a little bit better and stuff better quality that's why you buy them and stuff so you got that one down so that's one thing I've been doing I've been procuring and then the other thing I wanted to show you really quick that I don't know how I'm going to do it yet is, uh, let me get this lined up, okay, sorry about that, is, uh, let's get the decals put away, 
The Japanese, it's always great how they package stuff, and you're going to see that in a second, too. They're very meticulous. They're very uh, driven in their packaging. And it was kind of funny because I had ordered something. Oh, the car. This car was coming from, like, I don't know if it was Michigan or something like that. And these decals were coming from Japan. And I actually got these decals before I got the car. And both of them were sent uh, post. As the British would say. Okay, somebody else will get mad at me again. But c'est la vie, c'est la guerre. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you was uh, this, because, uh, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, I really don't want to take it out of the bag, and this is why I'm happy I'm filming at this time of the day. Maybe you can see it closer up. But these are actually, there's this company called Zero Paints. Uh, yeah, and they come actually from Great Britain. And these are something that I've been dying to try, because the guy over there, matches them exactly to the actual cars. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube that does car models and he uses these zero paints and it's amazing because these are actually just like or just are automotive paints like if you went and got a tube of Duplicolor for a touch up on your car. Um, what they caution you is they say hey before you paint these and, they, and these are for airbrush uh, but also I want to try just brushing it on. I'll talk in, about that hopefully in a second too. But uh, yeah, um, they're for airbrush, uh, supposedly only, mm -hmm. but uh, the thing about them is that what they do is they actually uh, say prime the car first with a primer, uh, model primer, and then put this on because it'll melt the plastic actually. It's, it's what they call so hot. It's got so much petroleum or whatever to goof with the plastic but I'm still uh, want to do a test of this uh, on just some plastic like like a tab on one of the trees of the parts because uh, what what uh, I saw I saw another guy on the internet and he said okay let me try this stuff out and he had their primer he had their white paint and uh, he just uh, painted the uh, he did the primer and it wasn't as fine I think that it should have been but then he, because he had it comparing it to two other primers that he sprayed on the model. And then he just actually took the white paint and he sprayed it on. And it actually didn't melt the plastic or anything. In fact, it got stuck to it pretty good. It wouldn't wear off or anything. He actually was scraping it. But these paints are so hot. What was funny was he had the primer and he uh, went to mix it like I would with a, uh, with a, uh, using a paintbrush, but just you know backwards you know put the wood end in instead if it and it was a wood paintbrush that was uh colored red and uh the paint was so hot that it actually started taking the red paint off his uh his uh brush so uh and what was funny is uh okay that he's used, he's got red contaminating white should be pink and it actually didn't it was so strong that it actually you couldn't really even tell that he had done that uh but he caught it pretty quick anyway but uh, yeah, so uh, I want to try brushing this on too, see how that would work. And uh, my paintbrushes that I usually do with uh, making models are typically uh, uh, plastic with a uh, nylon uh, bristles. And uh, I'm just wondering if the bristles are going to melt and the plastic is going to melt before I can brush it on and stuff. But what's amazing is, um, you can see when I made these two cars, that... Uh, you know, I made the greens a little bit different. I tried this one color, and then I tried this color because I thought that would be closer to it. And then, lo and behold, you get this, and it's an, actually a very light green. These are all almost like pastels, uh, you know. Maybe you can see that. I can definitely see it from this side and stuff. Uh, you can see, you know, that it's definitely like a lighter shade, especially the blue. The blue is like a San Diego Chargers powder blue and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, going to be interesting to see. And the yellow is kind of like a Benetton Camel yellow instead of like a bright yellow. Well, actually, you shake it up and it looks bright. And that this is another thing that shows you the quality of these paints. Listen to this. 
See, they got a ball bearing in it. The, uh, uh, or a, uh, yeah, piece of metal, whatever. But the other reason I don't want to unwrap these, and I'm sorry because it, it obstructs your view, is um, a lot of the guys, these, these paints, i got to get going because they're uh, time sensitive. Uh, a lot of guys will say, well, this will paint more than just one car. And so they'll go to store it, and the manufacturer even says it over in England. He says, hey, uh, realize that these paints aren't going to store that well. Like after a year, they're the... Uh, there's a solvent in there to keep them, uh, you know, spray paintable and stuff like this. And it's actually, even though it's capped and everything, it starts evaporating. So there are guys on the internet that say they put this inside of Ziploc bags, they put it inside of a second Ziploc bag, and then they put it inside a, a little Tupperware tub to keep the air out. And they've gotten it to last more than a year. But this is why I'm not taking it out of this plastic wrap, because I don't think the guy just sent this because it was bubble wrap. I think the guy knew that this would give it some protection from the air. Okay, so, oh, uh, the last thing that I've been doing, okay, let me get my Benetton out of the way here, is this. I'll show you in a second. Leger's away. Okay, so, oh, yeah, and this is Nanini's helmet. Silver with the uh, black and uh, blue stripes on the end and stuff like this. He was actually a pretty up-and-coming, talented driver, and uh, it was unfortunate he had that accident and stuff. So, but, uh, you know, life. So now I've got the exact right colors, and uh, I'm going to really be interested to see how these zero paints work and stuff like that, whether I actually do have to prime it, because like I said, that guy sprayed it on direct. He was doing a test, and uh, and it took it. So I don't know what to say. Oh, and on these cases, it's funny. These cases, man, you'll see people want 20 bucks for a case like this, 30 bucks. And uh, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. And so uh, years ago, not well, yeah, now it's years ago. Time goes fast. I just decided to uh, take a wild dive, and it had been a while, and I went into Toys R Us. You know, got to keep, you know, acting like a little kid. And uh, lo and behold, they had these display cases, and they were liquidating them. They had them for like... Four dollars a pop, like three ninety nine. It might have even been a slightly cheaper. So uh, yeah, I must have picked up like around uh, twenty five of them or so. You know, I came out like with two big garbage bags. Yeah, it was a hundred dollars in display cases, but heck, to now these people are charging uh, uh, twenty five dollars for a case like this, and it's crazy. It's just plastic. Okay, last. Uh, well, just about the last thing I want to show you is this. This is a Jordan 191. This was the first car that uh, Eddie Jordan, when he got into Formula One, had been in Formula Three, uh, they came up with. And uh, yeah, I've got this car. Uh, I decided.